343 recently released all the information you need to know before the release of Halo Reach, how the current development is going, and all the features are going to be added into the game. Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. <music> How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving another news informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these news information videos, please make sure to tap that like button so let us know you want to see some more content like this and it greatly helps out the channel and video. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on in Halo, make sure to tap subscribe if you're not already. Keep you up to date with everything going on in the Halo community guys. And so let's move on into the information here. I'm going to give you a brief overlay of kind of much everything about this update. Now we'll release sequential videos kind of going into more details about these. So if you want to stay up to date with those make sure you tap subscribe people and also sorry for the lack of face cam today but i am not feeling so well as you can probably hear and you probably don't want to see my sick face on screen as it might be a little distracting to the information so let's get right into it so in today's video, we're going to be talking a lot about Halo Reach as the flight recently concluded for that. We're going to talk about what 343 learned from the flighting program, their process moving forward, the different bugs and issues that are currently bugging the Reach on PC and what they're going to be doing with that, what's going to be available at launch, what's not going to be available at launch. And important things to know before launch as well when it comes to different kind of content and user generated content, seasonal progression as well, and just some other little goodies mixed in there on top of that. But on top of some awesome forge little details that we have to look forward to later on in 2020. So let's get right into the video here. So to start off, 343 talks about Flight 3 and what they were able to accomplish with that so they understand they were able to able to have people check and fix the implemented changes when it came to the flight as well as the underlying uh, systems and nope validate updating a live product on the way kind of thing so basically kind of making sure that they are able to keep up to date with the demands of the halo community here uh, they even mentioned that there was over 3,000 individual tickets via halo support site uh, before it comes to different uh, bugs and things like that so the team is very aware of many of the issues probably i'm sure you are experiencing and on top of that maybe you probably weren't even experiencing so to me that's just super nice to say that the halo community is willing to participate so much and to make sure that this game releases in the best possible way so there are many big issues involving this flighting uh, process guys which one of them was the mouse inputs as it was a huge issue with a lot of people before the uh the mid-flight patch that came out where a lot of people were saying that like you know ring one and two that the you know the game was feeling just fine on mouse and keyboard but then afterwards the uh, mouse inputs were not feeling the best and after that patch during mid-flight to me it felt a lot better but a lot of people were still experiencing some input delay so now 343 says they're going to be trying to look into this as you guys do know that the flight that we did get a chance to play on is about three weeks behind the current build of halo reach so they say that they have taken steps to improve on that though we uh, don't know exactly how well it's going to be feeling and I'm sure you can't really test it out until you hand it out to the public uh, from my experience after the flight uh, pa uh, patch that it was actually feeling pretty good uh, you know it just it took some learning because Halo is a very different kind of shooter uh, another one was the controller aim assist on PC. That was a big issue. It was even getting called out in game. A lot of people were saying, oh, Kevin Kulix, controller user. I'm like, yeah, we're, we're playing Halo, guys. Like, this game was built on, demanded to be played on a controller. And they were saying that the aim assist is pretty strong with this game, the bullet magnetism as well. Uh, to where they were thinking about maybe even having the split have an opt-in feature where you would even have to play with like the lower aim assist or magnetism as well but they said the issue with that would be the be splitting the player base quite a bit and obviously with mcc being you know obviously a little bit on the smaller side of things when it comes to size of the community that's dividing up the player base on that would be not the best obviously they said maybe adding in an opt-in feature but, uh, you know, that's also on the table, but they did mention about how that would take a lot of extra work just to add an opt-in feature and didn't work with these uh, different uh, magnetism and auto-aim kind of feel to the game. So I wouldn't expect much changes happening with that, guys, to be honest. Uh, variable frame rate was something that was a big issue and uh, they mentioned that with the higher frame rates became with more input lag when it came to your mouse and keyboard which obviously you don't want to have happen with, especially with a shooter now uh, after the patch in flight 3 on pc they removed the free variable frame rate uh, to help isolate the issue when it came to using mouse and, mouse and keyboard and they do state in here that variable frame rate will be included at launch they said it's going to be an experimental version of it so i wouldn't expect it to be 
flawless when it does launch guys i would still assume that 60 fps 1080p would be the best way to probably play reach uh, but variable frame rate will be available on pc which is going to be absolutely important for that game uh, they, and they say they will be looking to update and maybe fix if any issues come across right there now various issues that they say they were looking into or know about uh, a lot of people are talking about where they get audio issues saying that the uh, game on the 360 sounds a little bit better than the version on the pc and mcc the pc and mcc version just sounds a little com too compressed doesn't sound beefy as much as the original 360 version so they're looking into that server latency for especially for the people uh, outside the us we're kind of experiencing that i did definitely did see that as well so hopefully people were able to kind of look into that push to talk feature which i would assume that would be uh, pretty easy to do as well uh, as they had to make that for this pc version as the xbox version never really had a push to talk you know you just uh you know mic is always on and so hopefully they add that into the pc vsync which you guys don't know what vsync is it basically matches up your your game with frame rate with the frame rate on your monitor to reduce screen tearing so then you, if you guys know what screen tearing is it basically it makes it so like your screen has multiple images kind of overlaid on each other and then basically it creates like a disconnection on the screen it's like you'll know it when you look into it basically uh, so they're looking to fix that i'm assuming that would probably be done i wasn't experiencing that with vsync but i know my buddy patman gaming was certainly dealing with that as well and also just uh, various crashes and getting stuck in menus. For me, after the patch in mid-flight, that res issue was resolved for me, but I'm, so I'm sure some other people were having that issue as well. Do you guys remember that whole file migration thing that happened a few months ago during the summer where basically all your custom modes and maps transferred over to the MCC? Well, that is definitely happening with this launch for you guys as well. They kind of break it down here in a little bit of details about that. So basically the, the 6.2 million maps that were created and I think also like 3 million game modes, so over almost 10 million and change when it came to content in the game. It is actually going to be available day one for you guys though. Sadly enough, for your PC players, Forge and Theater will not be at there at launch. It will be coming at a later date in 2020, but it will be available for all the Xbox users day one. We'll be able to use Forge and Theater. Uh, PC file share uploads will not be active at launch either, sadly enough, but I'm sure that will come around eventually. Uh, user generated content, over 6.2 million maps and modes happened this year and the content will be accessible in the game as of December 3rd, day one of MCC launch which is going to be great. Obviously, without Forge and Theater going to be in the PC version, and there's definitely going to be people wanting to play some custom modes, this is going to be a great way to substitute for that. And also, don't forget, guys, we do have the modding community on PC, which is going to be a huge help when it comes to that user-generated uh, custom game content. You can definitely keep an eye out for that. Uh, they do mention that there was a lot more improvements and things that they're looking to do for PC Forge and they're definitely going to be helping out with that. Some heavy lifting as they quoted it and uh, some really cool things coming along with that on Forge. So if you guys do not know, Forge is actually getting a bit of an update when it came comes to the PC version, which is going to be pretty great. As you can see probably in the screenshot right here, there's a ton of new content coming to Forge on PC as you can see right here. And I believe it might be coming to the MCC version as well. Whole lot of new things to kind of play around with as well and they're even going to be upping the quota for uh, things that you can possibly put on the map from 89 to 141. Call of Duty reference? I don't know but anyways uh, so that's really great to see that the uh, team is looking to take advantage of the advanced hardware on PC hopefully make it so you can have a better more expensive experience playing forge on pc than you would on any other platform which is going to be pretty freaking awesome on that one and last thing to touch on here guys is going to be the progression that's going to be coming to halo mcc for halo sorry not with halo reach that's gonna be the first season the noble season season one here guys and basically they've done a, quite a few of the updates since the flight uh they mentioned how in the flighting you couldn't really tell exactly what you were unlocking as they would just basically show like a default body piece default shoulder or helmet kind of thing now they replace it with a png file so you can kind of see what you're actually going to be unlocking in this season and they do take into consideration to how people were talking about how they kind of missed the uh, hop around kind of unlocks you would in the previous Halo Reach back in the 360 you kind of unlock what you want and when you want it where this one looks more kind of linear path with it they do say they take that in consideration but it does not really look like they're going to be able to uh, you know kind of 
pick out what you want. You're gonna have to grind your way through the season pass where there's there's a hundred different items to unlock. So you need to get rank up a hundred times in the game to be able to unlock everything. Now, when the game first launched on for Flight 3, yeah, that grind was pretty severe where I was like, I actually did the quick math to it and it wasn't even accurate. I highly underestimated it. And they even came out to 14 days of gameplay, which is kind of absurd, which that you can accumulate that within like a year or two of playing a game, you know, relatively casually. And then um, after the update and during Flight 3, the XP gains were definitely much more significant. Uh, I didn't really get a chance to try it out too much because after, soon after that patch, they removed the progression system in Flight 3. Though, they're saying they're looking to try to check out player data and also check out the time to play versus XP gains and try to find out the right ratio of, you know, how much XP you should be earning per match and things like that. They do mention about also bringing in challenges on top of that. They give you a little XP boost on top of that, which I would be all for that. That's one thing I sorely missed from Halo Reach was the uh, challenge system that just helps kind of give you to play the game a different way, try out different content and kind of grind up and unlock more things. So definitely will be jumping on that. Might even be making videos about it as well in the future. But anyways, guys, so that's a little bit everything you need to know when it comes to everything about Flight 3. Like I said, I will be releasing more detailed videos on the same topics as well, kind of going more in depth on this, all this stuff. So if you guys want to stay update and watch those videos on the in-depth breakdowns of all this stuff we're talking about here, because there's a lot to go over. Uh, make sure to tap subscribe, people we'll keep you updated with everything going on the channel here. If you like this video and want to see more like it and you, know, you want to help out support the channel, make sure to tap that like button. That's more more people know about this content as well. If you also want to you know, leave a comment, just kind of let me know what you guys thought about all these updates. I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. But if you guys are new to the channel or miss any content for me, check out the videos on the screen right now, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.